So as the part of our last session, we have already built the code to read the data and clean it and filter out all the missing values from the data frame. How you can uh, place the same build into our Hadoop cluster and run the Spark application on YARN. Also guys, if you like the Spark based use cases, please subscribe to my channel GK Code Labs. Now let's dive into the session and see how we can deploy our Spark code onto the Hadoop cluster and run it on YARN. So this is the code that we built on our last tutorial. If you have not seen that video, please uh, check in the i button. Quickly for the reference, I will tell this code will read the file from uh, this particular directory into spark data frame. Then it will filter out the valid data uh, that is uh, in in case uh, the quantity sold column, no values are missing or you can add multiple columns here and the invalid data in which case the vendor ID or the quantity sold is missing that is considered to be an invalid data and it will bifurcate the complete data frame into two data frames that is valid and invalid. Valid data will be written to one particular directory that is valid. Invalid data will be written to another directory that is hold. So that was a quick review that we have already discussed in previous video. Now as a part of this session, we are going to uh, take this particular code and push it onto our uh, big data cluster and execute it on YARN. So make a note, this is a PySpark application. Guys, you know what? While recording this video, I have faced an interesting issue uh, while running the job on YARN. So you will see that in a couple of minutes. Uh, make sure you watch this video till end because that is a rare scenario but a very interesting one and uh, that boggles most of the minds. And fortunately, I have faced that while making this video. So please make sure uh, do watch this video till end. So when you are deploying any application, be it in Scala or Spark, just make sure this is not the ideal practice that uh, we hard code the paths. This should be taken uh, from uh, any config file that you should maintain as a part of uh, your code. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to deploy. In my next video, I will explain you how you can maintain this uh, production standard codes where you don't have to hard code the values. So as a part of this session, make sure you have to take care of two things. First thing is the master. Because we are going to run it on YARN, uh, you need not mention it uh, in your code because uh, whatever master you mention in code that will be taken as first priority. And uh, I would suggest we can completely remove this from here because anyways, now we are not going to run it in PyCharm. We are going to run it on YARN. And while submitting the application, we will uh, configure the YARN to be our uh, resource manager and application name whatever you want uh, let's rename it as PySpark filter and also we have to update the input and output files so for running and deploying the application i will be using uh, hortonworks cluster that is hdp platform if you already have hdp platform uh, you can use that i'm not using cloudera quick start vm here because uh, that needs to be updated manually using cloudera manager uh, if you want to use uh, spark 2 and above by default, it has uh, Spark 1.6. So that is the reason I'm not using. Uh, I'm using the HDP platform 3.0, which already has Spark 2.3. And we can easily run uh, Spark session related applications and functions uh, over uh, Spark 2.3. So now let's uh, quickly push this code uh, to uh, Hortonworks cluster. I'll open my code location and this is my project directory. If you want, you can zip it or you can push entire folder as well because this is a small application so we have no issues for pushing the code uh, to any server or in our case the virtual machine you can use either clients like winscp and uh, filezilla or simply you can use uh, scp that is secure copy so if you're on a linux machine or a mac you'll have uh, scp by default in your terminal you can use that using the command that i will be going to show otherwise on a windows machine you, you have multiple options like sigwin if you have already uh, installed it that is a bit longer process otherwise another option that you have is if you are using uh, github and you have already set up git on your uh, windows machine so git alongside uh, also provides a uh, git bash terminal so as i use it uh, if you want you can uh, check in your system if you have already configured git uh, just search for uh, bash so you will have git bash so this also uh, provides a virtual environment for uh, Linux like commands that you can uh, perform like LS, LTR or all the Linux type commands you will see. So using this also you can do SCP or simply you can use PowerShell. 
So all the various options you have. So let me use PowerShell for this because in the worst case, assuming that uh, you don't have any external application, but still you will have uh, PowerShell in your windows. So first what we have to do is go to our project location and open PowerShell here. Either you can copy this location and do CD in PowerShell or just uh, click here and write PowerShell. Now let me connect to my uh, Hortonworks cluster. To connect, I can do SSH, login as, uh, let's say root and the IP address of my uh, cluster. So once you start the virtual machine, you can see your IP address here. 192.168.0.108 in my case, it will be different in your case. You can see your uh, IP address uh, once you start your virtual machine. So I have to connect to 192.168.0.108 and I have to connect to port 222. This is uh, especially in the case of HDP cluster. If uh, you are doing a normal SSH, you can use port number uh, double two that is 22. Now it's asking for my password. Give it. I think something is wrong. Something is wrong. I think I have to give small p. Yes, I am logged in. You have to give small p. So let's see what all services are running. Currently, I can see almost all the service name node, data node, Ambari server, Kafka, and for resource manager. Yeah, everything that we need is running. Let me show you the cluster uh, web UI also. So the Ambari default port in uh, Hortonworks cluster is 8080. You can go to your IP address and uh, 8080 port, you will see the Ambari UI. So all my essential services are running, HDFS, YARN, MapReduce, Zookeeper. Coming to my uh, resource manager UI, this is my YARN UI. It will not open. I think I have not bind the ports to my Windows VM. So I have to directly access this from 192.168.0.108. Yeah. So this is my YARN UI. So YARN now comes with the new UI that is accessed by UI2 context root. So in this case, uh, if you go to applications and all, you will see somewhat uh, new kind of interface. If you still want to access uh, the older one, you can skip the UI2. So we still have the older interface like this. So this is how earlier we used to see, but uh, we have another uh, more attractive UI and just uh, you can make a note of it. Now let's come back to our PowerShell. So here we are already into our Hortonworks cluster, uh, but now again we have to log into PowerShell from our Windows environment. So we already have it here. This PySpark project we have to push to cluster. A fun fact and an important update. Do you know the online uh, media platforms like YouTube, Netflix, they have limited the video quality on mobile devices to only 480p as uh, due to this COVID-19 situation. On mobile devices, you cannot watch the videos over 480p. So if some of my friends watching this video are facing issues and you are not able to see my code in proper 1080p format, please lift yourselves up from your sofa or bed and go watch this on your laptop or a desktop. Because I have received comments like you should record videos in uh, HD. So bhai or beno, I record all my videos in HD. And as of current situation where uh, the online platforms are reducing the bandwidth usage, they are first targeting the mobile devices and reducing the resolution that is available on the mobile phones. So I request you to watch this video on your computer. Now let's get back to the video. Let's create any path where we are going to keep our uh, data and PySpark application. So currently I am in root. Let me create some directory inside home. I will make a directory here. GK code labs. And I want my and I want my application to come inside the home GK code labs folder. So notice the command carefully. Make sure you are in the same folder. And the command is SCP that is secure copy hyphen capital P and the port. The machine is running on double two double two. And as this is a directory, we have to mention hyphen R that means recursive copy. In case you are just uh, copying a file or you are zipping the project and pushing it you can uh, skip the hyphen r then the file or directory name that is pyspark project now where you have to put it uh, you have to log into that server 
login as the user id that you that has access to login to that server in our case that is root and the ip address of that 08 and colon followed by the path where you have to copy so that is home gk code labs if you do not mention the path it will by default go into the home directory of the user that you are using to login so explicitly you can mention the path and also make sure this user should have access to the path that you are moving to on the destination server now let's hit this it will ask for password you can see all files are now copied now let's go to the server and go inside gk code labs directory you can see we have the uh, directory here so whatever structure you have kept for your code you can see inside uh, pyspark project i had src main python inside that i had the uh, python file so project src main python and here we have the file i have already placed my uh, data files onto hdfs i have already placed my data files to hdfs let me show you for checking the files in hdfs hdfs dfs hyphen ls i have placed it in data sets sorry i have to use hdfs command again i have my sales landing so i have my sales dump here this is into my hdfs you can either use hdfs dfs or uh, there is another option the older command hadoop fs hyphen or whatever command uh, like let me list the output directory as well so currently you can see my uh, output directory is uh, not having anything now let us execute the code and let's see if our output gets generated let me go back to where my code was there this is what i have to submit onto spark and use the hadoop cluster to run on yarn so to submit it we'll use the spark submit command now one more thing we have to update the input and output paths so i'll open this file daily data ingest and inside this i'll go to insert mode i'll update the path to my hdfs directory that is slash data sets same goes for output so i think that's enough let's exit it save and exit now let's submit the application we are already in the application folder so we'll hit spark submit spark hyphen submit and the master would be yarn and the file name you can also mention the number of executors and core but uh, we'll come to that when we'll handle more data uh, as a part of optimization uh, but as of now uh, let's try to execute this press enter you can see now spark will start and submit this to our yarn you can see the job is in accepted state let's see from the front end ui let's refresh it you can see our pi spark filter that we built in yarn cluster you will see the application name whatever you will mention in app name so pi spark filter is already submitted if you want to see new ui here also you can go refresh it you can see this is uh, accepted now let's wait for this to complete i think there is some issue it should not be accepted for such a long time because data was not very huge let's see let's see what is going on this node okay i think uh, the yarn has got stuck because if you can see inside node i cannot see any node active here so maybe there is some issue with the cluster startup or something actually this is a good scenario uh, to add if you are seeing that jobs are only in accepted state for so long uh, although my data was not that huge that it should be waiting for resources you can check first thing is uh is there any issue with the nodes you can see all the resources are zero so in such cases uh, even if you wait for 2 uh, hours 3 hours one day it won't submit it won't go to uh, running or completed state because there are no nodes that uh, it has to that it can use resources for so let me try to restart this maybe then our node starts reflecting here let me go to ambari again to restart yarn uh, you can go to ambari ui go to yarn and go to actions and do restart all first let me kill that application this is not going to submit go to settings kill application yes okay the application is killed let's go to application refresh 
yes the application is killed and let's see from here also it should stop okay it stopped now i'm going to restart my uh, yarn confirm restart all let's wait for some time this might take some time so i'll forward the video so fine uh, you will see the green symbol restart all components of yarn this is done let's click on ok uh, you might want to wait for some time because uh, it might uh, take some time to reflect on yarn cluster now refresh it go to nodes you can see our node is started to reflect and now here also memory and virtual cores are uh, reflecting so probably now if we submit the application it should uh, take as running or uh, processing let me try to hit the same thing again spark submit master yarn and the file name enter now let's go to the yarn ui so it is in accepted state now you can see it has come to running state 10 percent is completed in old ui also you can see running as of now the final status is undefined 3 gb by default is allocated for this job pi spark filter 75 percent usage uh, refresh okay this is finished so finished means uh, our output file should be generated now now let me connect to my hdfs or uh, it's better you can have a look on the front end ui of hdfs as well so let's go to hdfs name node ui again i have to use the ip address as i have not bind it 192.168.0.108 sorry 0.108 so go to utilities browse file system now i have created the directory inside data sets e-commerce then output you can see just now it has got created 1954 that is 7 744 sorry 746 two minutes back it has got created and we have the hold and the valid path so correctly we are getting our output if you want to see you can see it from here as well to fs hyphen cat i don't know i remember the path or not anyways data sets no actually i don't remember so let me list it first e-commerce pipeline inside that outputs hold and let me read this file so same way you can see we are getting the whole reason code as we intended so i hope from this video you know how uh, we can push the PySpark code or the scala code is not covered in this video but uh, process is same we have to build the jar files and we have to push in python there is no jar file we can uh, either package the data into a zip file or python eggs and then push the file to cluster and you have also seen uh, how we can uh, submit the spark application to yarn you have also seen a uh, few uis of yarn how you can uh, monitor the jobs how you can uh, kill the jobs how you can submit how you can restart the yarn cluster so guys if you like this video please hit that like button and please subscribe to gk code labs if you like such use case scenarios in big data thank you guys see you later